Am I too fat to have liposuction? Hello, I'm Dr. Thomas Locke. Welcome to this edition of the Wise Medical Minute. We frequently get asked a question, am I too fat to have liposuction? And that comes up in the context when patients present and they've been turned out elsewhere. And unfortunately, sometimes these folks did not make the wise choice as their first choice. But we have a lot of experience with helping people who have been turned down elsewhere. Now, truthfully, there is a such a thing as too fat, but realistically, we don't encounter that too often. And I don't agree with the standing philosophy that obesity is supposed to be with some contraindications to liposuction. That's simply not true. Liposuction can be a very useful tool in managing obesity from the point of view of serving as a motivational device. I'll get back to that uh, as time allows. What we really have to look at is first a definition of obesity. Now, when we speak in medical terms, we use numbers, and to me, that's all they are, numbers. But you can calculate with a BMI, that's the magic number, by looking at your height and weight. It's a ratio, and to calculate your own BMI, take your weight in pounds, multiply it times 703, divide that number by your height in inches, and then divide that number again by your height in inches. Now, a healthy BMI is somewhere between 19.9 and 24.9. I carry the numbers 20 to 25 in my head because that's easier math. So, when you get above 25, the medical experts consider that unhealthy. The definition of obesity is when that number works out to be greater than 30. Now, once again, BMI is just a number. There is such a thing as fat and healthy, but I'm more interested in things that either cause you to be overweight or consequences of being overweight. And those issues are what need to be addressed before we determine whether liposuction is a good idea or not. Now, the idea behind treating patients who are more than a little bit overweight is you need to work with a surgeon who's comfortable both with the surgery itself as well as dealing with these so-called comorbidities. I'll get back to that term in a minute. But the medical consequences of being overweight are issues that by and large can be addressed satisfactorily that you can safely have liposuction but that must be done prior to your procedure. Now, we do a lot of rearranging fat and not just removing fat. And it's been my experience that for people wanting fat transfers, the so-called sweet spot as far as BMI, when you're trying to build a bigger butt or build a bigger pair of breasts, might actually fall outside the so-called healthy range. But that's why I say that number is just a number. We have to individualize each person's evaluation, and nothing is more important than a good medical baseline assessment before you have a liposuction procedure. Now, we look at things like blood pressure or blood sugar or issues like hypothyroidism. These can be either consequences or causes of the obesity problem. Addressing these makes it a lot safer to proceed with the procedure and you can get desired results. Now the other consequence of uh, that baseline assessment might be to change certain medications that you're on. Sometimes the medications are actually a cause of you being overweight. Sometimes the medications may interfere with the process of doing liposuction. So that's as important as the number, BMI, and all those other considerations when it's time to plan your procedure. Now, 
one of the most common consequences of being overweight is an abnormal blood sugar. Uh, people frequently, probably as much as half the time, when they come in wanting a smaller waistline, may not even be aware that the process that becomes diabetes is already present. We frequently identify this, and this will be a subject for future recordings, but the BMI is one number, but the next number we worry about is a hemoglobin A1C. We look at that number because we have observed that even in people with diagnosable diabetes, or people who are so-called pre-diabetic, we make that number better with liposuction. Now, A1C, I didn't define, it is basically an average blood sugar. It reflects how your sugar is 24 hours a day over the previous 12 weeks. So that's a number I'm more interested in than your BMI. So that A1C we have observed when we repeat it at 12 week intervals post liposuction, it almost invariably improves. So in essence, we've demonstrated with more than a little bit of experience that liposuction is actually a treatment for pre-diabetes. And people who are confirmed diabetics, there's significant improvement in their blood sugar as well. Um, now, the other concept that's important when we manage people who are more than a little bit overweight is a staged approach. What do I mean? Now, what's not technically feasible in a single procedure, very often we can accomplish with multiple procedures. Uh, two, three, or even more is not uncommon. So the idea is you have to plan these procedures in such a way that things are much better each time a procedure is performed and there are medical treatments in between procedures that make each subsequent procedure safer and getting you closer to your goals. So with a staged approach that I like to perform, I first have to see that a very overweight person with a BMI, say more than 35, or certainly if it's more than 40, uh, we want them to lose about 10% of their body weight before we do the first procedure. Now we'll assist in that regard. We do medically supervised weight loss before and after the various procedures in the staged approach. Now, the uh, patient is committed, you know, once they've uh, lost that first 10% of their body weight, which is not a whole lot when you look at someone who's starting at 250 pounds, losing 25 pounds is significant, but that's only the beginning. Uh, basically, in the second stage, which is the first procedure, we're really focused on dress sizes. We're being very aggressive with removing large amounts of fat. And people look wonderful in their clothes. You can get several dress sizes in that first procedure, which is stage two. Stage three is another interval after the recovery period where we do more medically supervised weight loss. Now, the idea behind the second and third stage is that third stage may be a final procedure and yet it may be another interim procedure depending on the individual. Doing three procedures before we get people to where they're wanting to be is not uncommon. Um, now with the uh, removal of large amounts of fat, the idea always comes up, what about loose skin? Now you'll get a difference of opinion on this subject from people who remove skin for a living. But after having done a few tummy tucks a few years back, I think we focus now on sparing people tummy tucks. Because even in patients who've gone from a size 24 to a size 10, you know, you can be spared a tummy tuck. The technologies that we use for skin tightening and more importantly, the nutritional advice we give helps the skin to retract. You can stimulate formation of new collagen. You can stimulate new formation of elastin. With adequate protein intake, a little bit of vitamin C, a little bit of zinc, and a whole lot of support and encouragement, uh, people can lose weight and not have loose skin. 
that's another subject for another video, another day. Now, the bottom line is lifestyle changes do matter. You can't keep doing what you did to get where you were when you got back. So hopefully, as people invest, and liposuction is not cheap, when you invest in improvement in your appearance, hopefully that'll serve as a motivation to change your lifestyle. If you like what you see in the mirror, and you're down three or four dress sizes, or you can get back into some clothes in the closet that you haven't worn in years, those kinds of things will make you want to go to the gym. Those things will make you not want that extra serving or that unnecessary dessert. So I see the things we can do with liposuction as a motivational tool to facilitate the lifestyle changes that are essential if you're going to be successful in this effort. So in summary, uh, obesity is not a contraindication to liposuction. People who are more than a little bit overweight can't have liposuction. We can do something about preventing excessive amounts of loose skin. And in the process, we actually treat a lot of medical problems we stumble upon along the way. So I thank you for your attention, and I look forward to future opportunities to share with you information. We know you have lots of choices when it comes to where you get your information, and I thank you for making the wise choice.